So I'm here in my garage, and on the wall behind me, you can see my my energy eddy and my Mixergy smart hot water tank. And in this video, I'm going to be using an eddy relay board in combination with a Shelly One relay and home assistant to give my Mixergy tank a bit more control over my eddy. If you like this video at the end, please do remember to click the like button. And if you like watching this sort of thing and you enjoy my other videos, please do remember to subscribe to get more. So what exactly is the problem that I'm trying to solve? Eddie at the moment is currently diverting my surplus solar, the blue light's on here, so that's sending 2.5 kilowatts of surplus solar into the element on my mixergy tank. Now the problem I have is that the Eddie doesn't know when essentially to stop. So there's a chart, there's a graph rather, or a display on my Mixergy that gives me the percentage of hot water in the tank. So it's currently at about 50%. So that means that based on my setup, about half the, the tank is full of water at 50 degrees. Now the eddy will keep going, it'll keep diverting until the safety cutoff in the element is tripped. So that's set currently at about 60, I think. I've, I've had to twiddle with that just due to the temperature of the water coming out of the top. So what's happening is that the eddy will keep heating until the water at the top of the tank reaches 60. But that doesn't take the water at the bottom of the tank into account. Now on the wall here, there's a PV switch. And this comes from uh, Mixergy. And that's connected into the eddy. So when the eddy is diverting, this little guy here will run the destratification pump inside the tank periodically, just moving the hot water, mingling with the cold water, trying to even out the temperature. So that's great, but it doesn't run all the time. So it means that the water at the top can get a bit hotter than the water at the bottom. What I want to do is make sure that the eddy is turned off when the mixergy senses that the tank is at 100% of its charge. So how am I going to accomplish this? This is an eddy relay board. So this comes from my energy and it essentially fits into the side of the eddy and it's got a couple of different options on it. One of the sensors on there is called an e-sense, and that can detect um, a live signal. So what I want to do, using the relay board and the Shelly, I want the Mixergy tank to turn the Shelly off when this reaches 100%. And then the relay board will tell the eddy to stop diverting. That's the plan anyway. So if we take a closer look at the relay board, we'll see there's two relays, one here and one here. They can be in a normally open or normally closed. They can be used for turning on other elements, depending on the kind of setup that you've got. There's plenty of details in the Eddie's instruction manual about the different scenarios. But the thing we're interested in is this down here, which is the eSense. So essentially we'll pass a live in here and when that's turned on or off you can configure the eddy to sort of do certain things. The usually advice that's in the manual is to do with off-peak electricity so if your meter is kind of mechanical I think you can wire them together have it so that when it's off-peak electricity it'll tell the, the eddy to start doing things or you can configure it to start doing things. But what I'm going to do is connect this to a Shelly so that I can control the eSense using that relay and then I will tell the eddy to turn the element on and off using that. Now I've had questions about why I can't just use the My Energy API to turn the eddy on or off. I'm a fan of, it's got a sort of local control. I don't want to involve 
the My Energy API if I can avoid it. That's just a personal thing. I like all my smart home control to be as local as possible. I'm not convinced about the reliability of that API as well because I currently have it connected to Home Assistant and it does kind of connect and disconnect on a fairly frequent basis. So I just think it will be easier if I can just use this relay board and then that's more of a hardware solution than a software solution. Now I will be using a cloud API for the Mixergy. There's, there's no local API being provided and there's no relays or outputs or anything on there that gives me uh, an indication that the tank is charged to 100%. I would like to find a way to use the display that's on the front, uh, maybe putting something in between it and the, the sort of board at the top, but that's a project uh, which I will probably never get round to. So coming back to this, um, essentially these are the two components I'm going to use. So a quick, quick overview of the Shelly. Uh, this is usually used for, light, for lighting control. Uh, it takes a switch live uh, that you can use, but essentially you just pass in a live and a neutral and then you've got a switch which is on a relay here. So I'll sort of rig this up beside the Eddy and using Home Assistant connect this into the Mixer G. Alright, so what I'll do now is I'll, take, I'll power down the Eddy, I'll take the cover off and I'll install the relay board. It comes with a few little bits and pieces. Uh, they did send me the wrong cable size initially but my energy sorted that out pretty quickly. So essentially we've got like a little ribbon cable. I've, d I've done a video on this actually. Um, it's up on probably on Twitter so I'll, I'll put a link to it to just kind of talk about the board. Um, but essentially yeah it just it just fits in. So let me so let me power everything down so I don't want to get a shock and I'll open it up and I can kind of show you inside. That's the cover off. Everything is powered down, including the, the mixergy. Just don't want any kind of anything rogue. So the relay board now should fit in, I think kind of somewhere here. So it provided some pretty basic instructions. So I'm gonna to have to go to the manual to get the exact details of where to put this in. Okay, so ran off, got my iPad, looked at the manual. So it essentially, the board sort of sits on that. Jeez, it's, it's very snug. All right. So step one is installing. Step one, it seems, is making sure you have enough battery in your camera. So that died whilst I was installing this. Um, so I'm just going to bring the camera a bit closer. So that's the board now installed. So it is quite snug. It sort of tucks in under the main board and the ribbon cable feeds in under that. So that's perfect. That's installed. Um, I have since restarted the Eddy. Everything seemed to be okay. I got some options for configuring the relay board. I'll run through that once I've got the Shelly installed. So the next step for me now is to just, I'm just gonna mount a small box here. I'll take some power from this uh, switched spur, which I think is easier than trying to take it from the eddy, or at least it'll be neater. I'll take the power up there and then take the switched relay under in through the box and then I'll connect that into the relay at the side. So let me get that mounted on the wall now. So I've got the box mounted on the wall but decided after speaking to my brother who's an electrician I got some advice from him because um, I was just questioning him about the, the size of cable I was going to run. So he told me not to use 
a small flex cable which I was planning to use um, in such it connected directly to such a large that's 2.5 square cable because it's carrying um, 16 amps for the eddy so explain that to me just in terms of how the fuse needs to fail before the cable fails and told me that the re the best way to do it would be to have um, another fused spur here uh, with an appropriate sized fuse so as I guess I'm kind of testing this out I decided to just go for a more temporary measure so I've just got a standard three pin plug there's a three amp fuse in this which is perfect for this 0.75 mil cable so I'll take that cable up connect it into the Shelly there and I'll use that cable to take it across if this turns out to be useful then I can do something a bit more permanent um, in terms of in terms of uh, taking uh, power directly from that so just going to finish the wiring up and get the Shelly connected in now I also just wanted to briefly talk about the safety cutoff so when I I've done a video on this where I reduced the the safety cutoff uh, in the element from the default 75 which you can see on there and I lowered that down but I couldn't lower it any lower than about 65 and the reason for that is that I use the element to run the the kind of the purge cycle so once every two weeks the mixergy will take the tank up to 60 degrees as part of a legionella purge so whilst this is a dual element I'm only actually using one of the elements because I'm using this PV switch unit which is designed to work with a single element I've, I've kind of talked about that in another video where it was something I didn't actually need to put in but the upside of having it is that it can run the destratification pump via these cables so you do get some benefit from having it but it does mean that I've had to raise the cutoff temperature of this element back up to sort of north of 60 I don't have like a mixing valve of the water coming out so that water can get quite hot um, and I've got small children so I'm just very conscious of that in terms of heating it so this is another another reason to try and get the eddy to stop once the mixergy thinks it's at 100% at 50 degrees um, I should have kind of mentioned that at the start but yeah I'm mentioning it now so that's kind of another another thing I just wanted to talk about so I've wired the Shelly in without connecting it to the eddy and I've just run a cable from the eSense terminals behind I'll put a tie wrap on there like I have on the other cables as some strain relief for that so I've just connected that in and I've added it to the iPad so I'm able to toggle that you probably can't hear it but that's toggling the the relay on and off so the next thing for me to do now is connect these together so that the <laughs> sorry I lost my train of thought the next thing to do is connect these together all wired in so I'm going to power the eddy up now Oh, I've switched it off at the consumer unit. So I'm going to power the eddy on now. Hey, okay, so let that boot up. And that shouldn't take more than a second. So now I'm going to go into the menu. Go down to device settings. And go to advanced enter our secret passcode and then we go down to this relay and sensors we go to eSense input and then what we say is heater enabled so we're going to turn that on so 
heater will be enabled when it's live. So if we stop back out there, so we're back out there. So to get this to boost now, I should just push this button and I'll select heater one. And that is now said it's boosting, but there's no blue light. So if I've done this correctly, oh, log into my iPad, I just type in my secret pin code and I now turn the relay on. Oh, it's disconnected because I rebooted. And it's not picking up the relay, which is disappointing. So let's see. Oh, perhaps its IP address has changed. Or something okay I'm gonna stop here and I'll investigate all right so I'm not 100% sure what happened the connection to the Shelly but I've reset it powered it down powered it back up uh, updated the firmware on it and it now appears to be live so let's give this another go so currently the relay is off so that means that the heating elements as far as the eddy is concerned, should be off because there's no voltage coming across the eSense. So if I go ahead now, hit the boost, I'll select heat on one, and it shouldn't actually do anything, which it doesn't appear to be doing. The blue light, one of these blue lights would come on if it was sending. Okay. So if I jump back here now and toggle the re oh I don't believe this. What is going on? Okay, let me see if I can't access the web page for the Shelly. Oh, okay, it's it's obviously having issues connecting. Or maintaining a connection to the Wi-Fi, oh, which is not, which is odd because there is an access point in my garage. So I'm really surprised about that. Um, interestingly, this is showing max temp reached, which it might be what it says when it's not able to turn on. I would have expected that to say maybe heater disabled or something, but. I'm assuming that's related, but I'm not having any joy with my Shelly control and I can't toggle the relay manually. Well, I could if I use the switching wire, but I don't want to do that. Okay, so I need to investigate this again. All right, another firmware update and I've locked the Shelly to the access point in the garage using the Unify controls. So hopefully this time we're back in business. Okay, so let's do this again. So we'll go to boost, we'll select heater. So this shouldn't start boosting. I'll now trigger the Shelly and we can see, yoohoo, it started to boost now based on the fact that that heater is now enabled. So if I go back and turn this off, it should tell the Eddie to stop. Fantastic. So that is working now as I expect. So the next part of the puzzle is to connect the mixer to charge level with the Shelly that's in there. And to do that, I'll need to jump over to my PC and use some node red. Oh yeah, brilliant. I'm, I'm yeah, chuffed with that now. Before I jump over to my PC, I just noticed that little E that's appeared. So that, that seems to appear when the relay is on. So if I turn the relay off, the little E disappears. So that's, that's telling me 
that that's the eSense indicator. Okay, so that, that's that's really useful to know. So I'm just going to turn that back on and the little e appears. Okay, that's good to know that there's some indication coming out of it when it's picking up that from the eSense uh, detector. Okay, to my computer. Okay, so here we are in Node-RED, which is the, uh, the application I use for all my home and smart home automations. So if we jump over to Home Assistant very quickly, we can currently see that the house is consuming 560 watts. The overall inverter is spitting out 2.9 and we're exporting kind of 50 to the grid. So if I check my, my energy app, I can see that, yeah, there's about 2.5 kilowatts uh, going in through the eddy. So if I jump now, over to the devices and services and I jump into my Shelly's. I've got a Shelly which I've called now Eddie. So if I open this and take a look, uh, I've got a switch in here which I've renamed as Eddie Heaters. So I'm just going to copy that and close that and if I flick this off and I jump over to the main you can now see that we're exporting about three kilowatts uh, to the grid which means the eddy isn't consuming anything which is what i expect so if we jump back turn this back on and jump back here we can see now that the grid is, is kind of consuming a little bit so it'll probably flip flop around as it tries to balance itself and the eddy kind of turns itself back on so that, that that's working as i expect which is good so back here in Node Red, I'm in my heating automations tab. So I already have an integration through Node Red with Home Assistant. So I have these little state change nodes here. Uh, and this is connected to the Mixergy's current charge. So what I want to say is that when the current charge reaches 100%, I want it to do something. And then as a converse down here, I'll say that when the current charge is less than 95%, it'll take some action. So what happens is when the state is changing, it's picking these up from Home Assistant and it'll emit little messages um, along these different wires. So the state changes for the temperature quite frequently. So in order to reduce noise and duplication, we add these little filter elements and what these will do is that if the payload if the message payload doesn't change it will filter that uh, it'll filter the message out to stop sending it through so we're basically saying yeah for this one i'll just take a little comment here this is basically saying turn off eddy and then we'll have another one, which is turn on Eddie. So now I want to invoke a service. So we'll do that through the call service yeah. node. So I'll drop that there. I won't connect them up yet. So what I want to do here is I want to call a switch and I'll paste in as the Eddie heaters. And what I want to do is turn it off. So we'll link that together. And we'll deploy that and then I'll have I'll just make this space here I'll move these down and then I'll have another switch call here Link those up and basically I want this to just turn it on so I'll deploy that now so what should happen when the eddy reaches 100% this will send a message and it will turn the Shelly relay off and when the current charge drops below 95%, it'll switch the Shelly relay back on. Now, if I go to Mixergy, I can see the current state of charge. So it's at 88%. So, and actually it's just appeared there as 88.7. So if I quickly make that 89 
and I make this 80 and I click deploy hopefully in a few seconds or a few minutes this will turn off the eddy so if I go back here let's have a look here it's at 88 percent it's not really giving me any finer detail than that if I switch off here and switch back my integration uh, I've written I've written that myself um, it connects Eddie I'm oh, sorry connects my mixer G with home assistant I'll publish a link to that in the, uh, the description but hopefully so that now got called and we can see at 1541 we turned it off and if I jump back here I can see that switched off and if we look at main brilliant we're back to exporting the bulk of the surplus solar so that would happen now so as I would expect we'd be using whatever bits of hot water and this would eventually drop you know the, the, the volume of water in the tank would eventually drop and then this would switch back on so that is fantastic so what I'll do now is I'll switch this back to 100 and I'll switch this to 95 and if we deploy that change the state should update pretty quickly as the temperature will be so once that change comes in we'll see it jump so we'll just wait so that's it that's just happened that's now switch back on if we jump back here this should start to drop as the eddy starts diverting which it is and yeah all is all is the same so that's now and i'll just have a quick check on the app yeah and that's diverting now into the eddy so that's it brilliant that's working now as i expect so hopefully we don't have long left in terms of good solar days so hopefully over the next couple of weeks i'll be able to see how much um, is actually being diverted that would have otherwise been sent into heating the tank up to kind of 60 or 65 so hopefully now we'll have a full tank at 50 and the eddy will just turn itself off and then we can start diverting any of that surplus either into the car or um, out to the grid so that should help me recoup some more money uh, rather than heating hot water that I ultimately won't use okay that's it uh, I hope you found that interesting it's certainly been a journey with batteries going flat um, I've also rebooted my comms closet a couple of times well whilst recording this as I'd set the wrong entity that was fun to see my internet die uh, yeah if you found that interesting yeah please do press the like button any questions any comments on this at all please use the comments below and yeah if you want to find out how I'm getting on with this automation please do subscribe uh, I'll post a follow up video probably at the end of the month and I'll see how I'll see how well it's performed but that's it for now I'm Tom and thanks for watching